Hey, welcome to Today Matters, our short devotional in the Word of God. And we are in the book of Psalms. And today we look at the second part of the first Psalm. And all of our pastors will be going through the book of Psalms chronologically. Yesterday we looked at verses one through three. Today we're going to dive into verses four through six. Now, to give you context from yesterday, I'm going to read the entire Psalm, one, one through six. And I'm reading from the New Living Translation. It says it like this. Oh, the joys of those who do not follow the advice of the wicked or stand around with sinners or join in with mockers, but they delight in the law of the Lord. Listen to what it says. Meditating on it day and night. It says they are like trees planted along the riverbank, bearing fruit each season. Their leaves never wither. Listen to this. We all want to prosper in 2022. And this is what it says. And they prosper in all they do. Verse four, but not the wicked. They are like worthless chaff scattered by the wind. They will be condemned at the time of judgment. It says sinners will have no place among the godly for the Lord watches over the path of the godly, but the path of the wicked leads to destruction. Now, we can conclude from yesterday's teaching that the prosperity of the righteous, those that live for God, reflects the wisdom of a life that's lived according to the plan of God. See, then this is contrasted in the remaining verses. So the prosperity of the righteous reflects the wisdom of a life lived according to the plan of the giver of all life. That's the key that we're following what God wants us to do. But we have to do what it says in the previous verses, which is plug into his word. Think about it. Meditate on it means think about it. And then actually act on it. The psalmist tells us in verse four, but not the wicked, not the evil person. Okay, that is, they will not prosper as those who love the Lord, the righteous do. The life of the wicked is summarized in this brief, what's known as a simile of verse four, the second part of verse four, it says, they are like chaff. Now, when you look at this, the language reflects the practice of winnowing grain at harvest time. Okay, the grain would be tossed into the air with a pitchfork at the village threshing floor. Now, the wind would separate the light chaff and the husks, and that would blow them away while the more substantial grain would fall back down to the floor, fall down to the floor. Now, chaff is just something that's light and useless. It's part of the crop, but it's a part that's really to be disposed of by the farmer. And Jesus used this very illustration of separating the wicked from the righteous. Now, the wicked are then depicted in the simile as just lightweights. Persons without real substance, persons without real worth. The lightness of the wicked is then explained a little bit more in verse 5. The two lines of verse 5 is known as a synonymous parallelism. Say that 10 times fast. Reflect This reflects essentially the same thought. Namely, that the wicked, they hold no weight, no influence in the important areas of human society where the righteous are going to meet for the pursuit of faith, hope, and love, the wicked have no place, and they're not even recognized. They live for themselves, and they cannot participate in the affairs of those who live for others and who live for the Lord and live for righteousness. It's saying they're going to be blown away. Even if they thrive, it seems, for a moment, like sometimes we feel like in our culture today, they're going to be blown away at the end of it all. It's not even going to matter. They're lightweights. And you contrast this in verse 6. And so in the last resort, human beings are of two kinds. They may be righteous, and if so, God protects their way, but they may be evil. And for the wicked, the final destiny is clearly laid out in Scripture as doom. The doom of the wicked, it talks about, is expressed in this psalm, is not primarily a punishment. Listen to this. It's not a punishment any more than the happiness of the righteous is some kind of reward. Listen, each is presented as the natural outcome of a way of life which has been chosen. See, we all choose our way in life. God has given us free will. 
And free will is an incredible gift, but it comes with great responsibility. Some use it, that, that gift, they use it to do evil. And they harm themselves and they harm other people. But others use it to do good and to help others. The psalmist reminds us here in the very first psalm, I love this, that the key to happiness in life, whether it be 700 BC or 2022 AD, is to very simply live for God, love his word, and you won't be consumed with happenstance, but you will be like a tree planted along the riverbank, bearing fruit each season, and whose leaves never wither, and they prosper in all they do. Hey, I want to encourage you, live for God and love his word more today, because today matters.